Hello Thingsters and welcome to this video. My name is Frederick. In this video I will show you how to merge Pandas data frames. It includes two parts. In the first one I will merge two data frames based on a common column. In the second one I will merge two data frames in between times. And what this means will become a little bit more apparent when we get there. Let's get started. I will be doing this tutorial in a Jupyter notebook and I already written all the code so I will just walk through it. We start off by importing pandas as pd, then we want to import the data from csv files and create data frames out of it, which we do here. And then we display those data frames and have a look at them. The data that I will be using for this first part is data about some stocks from the S&P 500. So we'll see the first data frame on the top here. It has a company column, a ticker column and a price column. On the bottom we have the second data frame that we are going to merge with. It has a ticker column, a price to earnings ratio column, a price to sales ratio column which are some financial key figures, but we're not going to get into that anymore here. The first thing we want to do when merging is find a good place to start with. And for this example, we can see that both of the data frames contain the ticker column. They also have the exact same values, which is very thankful. So we will merge on the ticker column. We use the merge method of pandas and merge the DF price with the DF key data frame and we merge on the ticker column. And here we see the merged data frame, which merge very nicely since they both had the ticker columns and all the values in the ticker columns was present in both data frames. So it made for a very nice merge, as we can see here. However, merging is not always this straightforward. We will try something different for the next example. We slice the df.key data frame in half like this, so it only contains half of the companies it originally did. Then we do the exact same merge as before with DF price and DF key on the ticker column. This is the new data frame that we get from that. And what the merge method does is that it matches the rows that matches in both data frames. So now that we only have four companies left in the key data frame, matches them with the same four companies in the price data frame. This is called an inner merge and, is it, and it is what pandas merge method does by default. However, if we want to include all of the companies from the DF price data frame, for example, we can do that by changing the how parameter of merge to outer. Now we see that we get the companies that are not present in the key data frame as well. And we have eight companies again with a lot of NAN values since they do no longer exist in the key data frame. Some other ways to merge uh, are to set the how parameter to left. It will perform a left merge. It will include all the values from the data frame on the left, which is price in this case, and also the matching rows from the right, which is key in this case. Or we could perform a right merge, which will do the opposite, include the all the rows from the right and the matching ones from the left. So for this next part of the tutorial, we will merge two data frames in between times. 
So we are going to import some new CSV files and create new uh, data frames that we will use for this example. The data frames now contains data about a day of trading of the Apple stock with the first one contains the price of the Apple stock for a given date. Second one contains the trading volume of that stock during a day. And we see that we have eight timestamps in both data frames. However, they do not match as we can see. The first one is from 930 and the first one for the volume data frame is from 945. So if we wanted to merge these data frames based on time, that would be a problem. Luckily for us, the pandas package has a method called merge as of that will take care of this problem for us. First off, when we imported the data from the CSV file and created our data frames, the time column is now a column with the date types object. We would like to convert this to a date time object. So that's what we do here. We convert every value in the time column to a date time object for both data frames they still look the same. So it's time to merge the data frames based on time. We use the merge as of method. We give it the two data frames that we would like to merge. We would like to merge them on time by ticker and this is because they both have the same ticker column otherwise it, the new data frame would contain two ticker columns with the same value so it's nice to merge them together and we set this direction parameters to backward which is also the default value of the merge as of method but I still set it because I would like to explain how it works so this is the resulting output. Now as we can see we have values for both price and volume and we use the timestamps of the price data frame um, if we remember. This is because the uh, price data frame was passed as the first argument and what this does is that when we set the direction to backward, it does something called backward fill, meaning that the merge as of method fills the value with the closest value backwards in time. So for example, the value at 1130 corresponds to the value from the original data frame at 1045. And this is because this is the closest in time going backward. This is also why the 930 row doesn't contain a volume value because the original volume data frame does not have a value before 930. So it just puts NAN in there. To take care of this, we could change the direction of the merge to forward. And this will do a forward fill instead. And as some of you might already have figured out, it instead looks forwards in time. So now the value at 1030 corresponds to the value from 1045 from the original data frame since that is the closest value forward in time. And we can also see that now 930 has a value since the original data frame had a value at 945. One last thing that I would like to show before we wrap this up is the tolerance parameter of merge azov, which is something you can set to a specified time in this case 10 minutes i have chosen because sometimes 
you don't want the values to be too far off in time because then they can be useless. So when we use 10 minutes in this case, we get a lot of NAN values. And that is because all the volume values, except for the last one, which was both a 16, are off by 15 minutes. And the merge then excludes them. All right, that's it for this video. This is a huge topic and there are a lot to explore about merging data frames. This was just a brief introduction, which you can use. I hope you all enjoyed it. All the best.